everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, in this week's guitar lesson, I wanted to pay tribute to James Burton. He's one of the greatest guitar players of all time, the master of the Telecaster. And he's played with just about everyone. He's he played with uh, Rick Nelson early in his career. He's played with John Denver. He played, probably most famously known for playing with Elvis Presley. But um, he's just the perfect combination to me of country and blues. If you were to take take them and put them together in a blender, you'd get James Burton. I mean, he's got enough twang. He's got the telly thing. He's got a lot of those real fast chicken picking country licks, but he's also got a lot of soul and a lot of blues. And I just think he's a very interesting player. So we're going to take a look at several of James Burton's signature licks. I've pulled them together from different things that I've heard him do, and I've put them into my own composition. So this is my take on James Burton, kind of an in the style of. Uh, if you'd like to download the tablature for everything that I play in the intro, I'm going to break it all down note for note. I'm also going to explain all the why behind the notes so that you understand not only how to play them, but you understand why they work so that you can improvise on them and you can take them in your own direction. That's what I do in all of these lessons at Active Melody. But uh, if you want to download the tablature as well as the MP3 jam track that you can practice with, and I have that in two tempos, by the way. I have a slower tempo as well. You can get all of that at ActiveMelody.com as well as the Part 2 video. Uh, just look for EP161. That's a lesson number for this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started with Part 1. All right, let's talk through tone settings real quick, and then we'll jump into the uh, specifics of the lesson. So I had to grab the Telecaster for this lesson. If we're going to do James Burton, you got to... I felt like I needed a telly anyway. Uh, his Telecaster has a middle pickup that he's added, which is very cool. Now, I'm playing on the bridge pickup, and I have the tone all the way up at 10. I have the volume at about 7 or 8. Um, I'm running out of the guitar and into a Zen Drive pedal, which is something I don't usually use. I thought that the tone kind of matched what I was going for. It's kind of got a mellow tone. Um, and I have there's four dials on it. I have them all at around 6, if I'm just looking eyeballing it. Out of the Zen Drive into the Strymon Timeline for a little bit of slapback delay, and then out of that and into a PV Classic 20 uh, head, which goes into the camera. And then the, the head is, has a reverb setting at about four. So don't get caught up in pedals. Some of you will say, oh, i got to get a Zen Drive. You, you don't have to have that. You can use a, a Tube Screamer uh, if you've got that, or you can just play straight into your amp. I did that for years and never had any pedals and was able to play just fine. In fact, I think pedals are limiting in a lot of ways. Um, sometimes it's just easier to get raw tone and just go with it, right? So play this clean channel, whatever you got, just try and learn the notes. That's the that's the important thing. So okay, so this is a uh, uh, a one four five progression. It's in the key of A. So the first chord is an A chord. Then we go to a D chord. Then we go to an E chord, and then back to the A. So you hold the A for four, you hold the D for four measures, uh, and then back to the A, you hold the E, go into the E for two measures, and then it repeats. Um, so it's kind of pretty straight, you know, country rock uh, blues type jam. Um, now let's get into the notes. So uh, the first thing I want to mention, uh, we're going to start off by playing a double stop. <laughs> And when I talk about double stop, that just means you're playing two notes at once. You're harmonizing your lead. If you'd like to know more about harmonized leads, I did a, a lesson uh, not too long ago on that, and I go into detail. So be sure to check that out. It actually is kind of complementary to this one, I would say. It's more of a background on how, how to harmonize your lead. But uh, if you go to the lesson page on ActiveMelody.com, go to the little search box and type in EP157. That's a lesson number for... Uh, look or, or for harmonizing lead. So if you're interested in that, uh, be sure to check that out. But anyway, <clears throat> what happens when you're harmonizing a lead is you're 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 taking and you're you're using intervals. And so an, all an interval is is the space between two notes. So you can have thirds, which means your interval looks like this. You can have sixths, which means your interval looks like this. Uh, you can have sevenths. It can go up to seven, I guess. Um, so that's what that's what an interval is. It's just the space between two notes. Now, what do you what do I mean when I say a third, a fifth? I'm just talking about the note. If we counted the notes in the in the scale, whatever scale we're using, let's assume it's the major scale: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. So the space. If I say thirds, we're gonna go from here, from the one. We're gonna say one, two, three. So now, if you play the one and three together, hear how it harmonizes? That's playing in thirds. 
So if I wanted to play in six, you had to say one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's what a, a harmonized six sounds like. So that's really all it is. So in that works, now I was just doing that with a major scale. You can do that with a minor scale. You can do it with any scale. So that's that's what you, what what is meant when you hear somebody say a harmonized you know fifth or something. It sounds really complicated, but it's really not. Um, okay, so in country, uh, and what James Burton often does um, it, when he's playing is he'll take the Mixolydian scale and he'll harmonize it in, in either playing thirds or playing sixths. And I'm going to show you how to do both of those in this. And uh, so there's a lot that you're going to learn. Uh, now, what is the Mixolydian scale? Well, I've covered that in previous lessons as well, but it's very easy. It's just the major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. You take the T, or the 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and you flatten it. That's it. That's the Mixolydian scale. By flatting that one note, you get a different feel for the... For if, so if you're playing a lead... You can play this all this kind of happy stuff, and then you throw in that one note. It kind of gives you a weird twist, just changing the one note. But that's the Mixolydian scale. So now if we took the Mixolydian scale and we harmonized each of those seven notes that I just played, we harmonized them in thirds. See, that's that first thing that I'm showing you. That's the first lick we're going to learn. Um, that's where that comes from. So let's start there. Let's start with the first thing. So that's just a little bit, bit of background. Now the first thing we're going to play, I want you to look at how it plays off of the root fret so that you can translate this. You can learn this vocabulary and you can start using it in any song you play. Now, I want that to be your takeaway, that you understand uh, the why behind these, these notes. So if we're playing an A, this is my thought process. I take the, the A major bar chord. And wherever my bar is, that's my root fret. That's home base. So when I play this lick, look at how it plays off, or how it is, where it is in relation to your root fret. So that if we were in G, I can play that same lick there. I just look at how it relates to the root uh, root fret, or the, the the first chord, the one chord. Um, okay. So that note, or that lick rather. Now we're getting to the meat. Uh, is you have the third fret first string index finger and then you have the fifth fret second string and I use my ring finger for that and I'm going to play down strokes just on the one and two string I'm going to play three of them one two three and then on the fourth one I'm going to slide it so one two three slide and then one two and we do two more and then I just repeat that now if I told you I want to hear those same two thirds, but I want to hear it in the key of B. You should be able to go, okay, that's your root fret, then B would be here. So there's your root fret, so those licks would be here. So now just remember that, okay? So you could take those thirds now if you wanted and keep walking up the neck with them. Um, now there, there are always going to be two different patterns. There's always going to be like a pattern A and then a pattern B, but it's really just going to be those two patterns when you're using two strings. And that happens whether you're using strings one and two, or strings two and four, which we're about to do, or whatever. There's always a pattern A and a pattern B, and it's just going back and forth between those two patterns. Okay, so that's intervals, uh, third intervals uh, in the Mixolydian scale. Now let's go to six intervals. So the next, so the first thing that I played was that the next thing is this little lick. And what, what I'm doing is I'm staying in A, is I take my root chord here and where my ring finger and pinky are, which would be the seventh fret, if I put the, uh, in that, within that fret, if I put my ring finger down on the seventh fret second string and my middle finger down on the seventh fret fourth string, you can see how I, you can visualize where these two notes are and then you've got this. Well, this is part, this is one little, har this is a sixth uh, harmony, but it's part of that Mixolydian scale. So I could take this, and I can slide it down too. Now, what you've just learned in that, 
is you can take any bar chord, if it's a blues, and then it goes to the next chord. You see that? That's the power of learning these these um, these intervals. So you've got this one, you've got this one. Now to go down one more, we're gonna go to. Remember how I said there's always like two shapes. So there's like a pattern A, pattern B. This is pattern A. This is pattern B. So in this case, we've got a little staggered effect here. Now I've got my index finger on the third fret, second string. My middle finger is on the fourth fret, fourth string. Okay, now we're going to go up, we're going to go back to pattern A again, or, or pattern B, I guess, this next, this second pattern we learned. And we're going to do it like this, and then we're going to do it up here. So, when I played that lick, I came from here, and walked right down what I just showed you. And that was all in A. So just remember how it plays off of your chord. That's, that's the key to this thing. So the way I started the lick was with my middle finger on the 9th fret 4th string. And I slid up to the 11th fret 4th string. And then I put my index finger down on the 10th fret 2nd string. And I use hybrid picking for that. So I'm picking on the 4th string. And then I'm plucking with my ring finger on the 2nd string. So it goes like this. See? Now you could pick, if you want to just use your pick, you can do that, but I would recommend getting used to hybrid picking. Okay, so um, just remember where this is, again, in relation to your root chord. Another way to think of this is this would be pattern uh, four of the major pentatonic scale. So you'd have, you know, your BB King box. It'd be, you're playing those two notes out of that box. So if that makes it easier to think about starting this lick, um, that's another way to, to think about it. Now we're going to take this, we're going to slide it down two frets. Just like that. And then we're going to go back to pattern A, I guess, the first pattern we learned. And we're going to go... So we, learned, we already covered those. So now we got four. And then we're coming down here, and I already showed you this. All right. And again, the picking, I'm just picking on the fourth string, plucking on the second string. Here it is slowly. Okay, from here, I hammered on with my ring finger to the fifth fret second string. I may have, might have used my pinky there, I'm not sure. Ring finger or pinky, whatever's more comfortable. And then I went. It sounds like a lot, right? Well, you're going to find that most of that is just hammer on and pull offs. But look at where we are now. So this is my, th my thought process once we came down to here. I thought about the major pentatonic scale is right here. Pattern one is anyway. You know, pattern two would be here. But remember, we go down three frets one, two, three from wherever we start. So this would be your pattern one. So now that we're in this position, I came down and went did the slide right into pattern one. So I used my ring finger, I started on the fifth fret, third string, slid down to the fourth fret, second fret, that's on the third string. And then we're, we go to the fourth string and play fourth fret, second fret. So and then watch this. So I'm just barring there, remember we're in A, I'm playing an A chord here, which look at how that A chord plays is in relation to this, this major scale, major pentatonic scale I should say. So 
from here, it's just a, uh, you play the third string and then you go to the fourth string with your ring, I'm using my ring finger on the fourth fret and I do a pull off and then I do a hammer on. So I picked it once, pull off and then I hammer on to the fourth fret, fifth string. And then I do an upstroke on the uh, third string. And then I hit that low A, which is the fifth string, the open fifth string. Okay, so it seems like a lot, but it's actually really not that complicated. Let me back up, I'll do it slowly. And then after we hit the A, I, I went. And that's just a, I'm keeping that bar there. And then I play with my middle finger on the third fret, fifth string. Do a hammer on with my ring finger to the fourth fret, fifth string. And do an upstroke on the third string. Okay. That was, there's a little stop in there. Notice I kind of, uh, in fact, the, I think I kind of slapped it to give it a little rhythm. And then I went, played this little. And again, what I'm doing is I'm going up to pattern two of the major pentatonic scale. Down, back down to pattern one. I'm starting at two. So, uh, ring finger, our middle finger is on the fourth fret, third string. We're going to slide up to the sixth fret, third string. And then my index finger goes down to the fifth fret, second string. As soon as I hit it, I slid it right back down to the fourth fret. And then the uh, second fret, uh, third string. And then I think that last note, that I sort of a trail off note, was the uh, fourth fret, fourth string. Okay. Um, let me back up and play through that one more time. I'll do it slowly and then we'll move on to the next part. So we have... Alright, now we go to the D part. And I played that. Now, um, this is where it gets interesting. So, you can, uh, you have all these options when you're playing lead. You could either switch the scale to match the chord, which I could have done, but I, uh, or I could play major or minor pentatonic scale uh, in the key that we're in. But in this case, I'm just playing, I'm um, staying in, uh, even though the chord went to a D, I'm still staying in the minor pentatonic scale for A, for the key of A, and just this place. It just sort of, it worked. I always use that, by the way, if I'm ever, if you're ever lost in a song, or you can always go back to the, that minor pentatonic scale of the key that you're in, and just use some lick that you know, even if it's just this one, or whatever, even though this chord goes to a, to a different chord, it's still going to work. Those licks are still going to work. So, okay. So what I did then was I'm just pattern one of the minor pentatonic scale for the key of A. If you don't know your pentatonic scales, the patterns and what I mean, there's a blues lead course which is available at activemelody.com which explains all of the patterns. But um, um, Okay, so that's strings two and three and I'm doing a downstroke. Um, and then I put my ring finger down the seventh fret fourth string. And I just repeat that. Now notice I'm pulling it slightly sharp. Slight, it's not extreme. It's not like that. It's and it just gives it a little bit of a kind of a country sound. So just practice that one and one two and one two and one two and one two. It's a great lick to use. It's fairly easy to do and you know where it is because it's just right in that pattern one. It's right out of that chord. 
Okay, so that I did that four times, and then I went into this um, uh, this country lick. It's really a pedal steel lick, um, and it's pretty easy to do because it's um, it's the same lick. You're just doing it in different positions. So the first time. Look at where it is. Always remember, don't just memorize the notes. Always tie it back to something, you know. So either tie it to this chord or the A chord up here. That would be a good one to tie it to. So, if, you know, a lot of you know how to make your A chord here and then make one up here using the D chord shape. But what I'm doing is I've got my ring finger on the 10th fret 2nd string, my index finger is on the uh, ninth fret third string and then I'm just doing a a bend with this finger so my ring finger stays down on the tenth fret for, uh, second string and the bend is on the third string here and you can bend it until it harmonizes keep pushing keep pushing until you it locks in and the other thing is I'm using my these two fingers, my middle finger and ring finger on my right hand. So that uh, you could use your pick, I guess. See how it has a different feel, though? I think it, it sounds more uh, chicken picking-y, I guess, to, to, to pluck it. Okay, so you use that, and then you take everything and go up one, two, three frets. It would make sense that, right, because we're always talking about the difference between the minor pentatonic scale and the major pentatonic scale. There's always that three fret stretch. Well, that's major. See how it sounds kind of happy? Well, if we want it to sound sad, we're going to go up three frets. One, two, three. And we're going to do the same lick. This time, we're doing the bend on the twelfth fret third string. So then the song comes back to the A, and I played a... Kind of a more of a is it a James Burton thing or more of a Chuck Berry? I'm not sure where that came from, but um, you're gonna bar the first two strings on the fifth fret. I actually played it twice. Then I use my ring finger and I bar the first three strings on the seventh fret, but I'm only gonna play strings two and three. So we have, and then we're gonna bar. Uh, do the same thing, but on the fifth fret, bar the first three strings on the fifth fret, playing strings two and three, so that you can play them and then hammer on with your middle finger to the sixth fret third string. And then I do an upstroke, grabbing strings one and two. So it goes. Look at all you're doing is you're building the A chord. You're just kind of dancing around the chord, but just visualize the chord. You can slide into that if you want to. And then I went, no, I actually went. Um, so I took uh, these two notes out of the chord. Um, so that's index finger on the fifth fret second string, middle finger on the sixth fret third string, and I just played those two strings, strings two and three. And just went back and forth between here and slid it down one and back. And then the song goes to the E, and so I got this uh, this banjo lick. It's a really a banjo roll that I noticed James does quite a bit. Really cool. Now I think he uses a metal pick on his finger. Uh, but anyway, um, what I'm doing is I'm hybrid picking. So I'm going to use my pick on the three string, and then I'm going to use my middle finger on the two string and my ring finger on the one string. You can see how I'm just doing a banjo roll here. Now what I'm doing with my left hand is I'm fretting on the third fret uh, third string and I'm doing a hammer on between the third fret and the fourth fret um, on the third string. So once I do the hammer on, then I do, so it's string three, one, or three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. Those are the string numbers. So. And then I went like this. 
Now I'm thinking E now, so we switch to E. So this little banjo lick is going to work uh, over an E chord because you, you have these two notes which are open strings in the E chord. So then I'll do a slide from the fourth fret down to the second fret on the third string with my middle finger. Take your hand off the fretboard, put it back on, and then watch this. That's just building the E chord. So it's a hammer on. From the on the third string, you do an open third string, hammer on to the first first fret, and then I plucked the one string. Now you may want to pick that with your pick. Um, probably be better actually to pick it because you get a little more volume. So. And then as the song goes back to the A at this point, um, I played this lick, which is a ch uh, something I hear James Burton do quite a bit. Also, a, kind of a ch another Chuck Berry thing. So after we play that E, we had that open one string that rings out. Well, I just matched the string by coming here. Same note, but I'm on the fifth fret second string. And then I'm thinking, oh, okay, we're back to pattern one. The song goes back to the A. So now I play a blues lick right out of pattern one. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a bend here on the seventh fret third string. And then I'm going to play one, two. So you bend, full bend, on, and I use two fingers to help with that. There's a bend. And then we're going to do one, two on the fifth fret second string. So And then that repeats. So it goes... So look at the picking pattern. Down, up, down, up, down, up. It alternates. And then the closing note is just a bend and release. 7th fret, 3rd string. 5th fret, 3rd string. 7th fret, 3rd string. Back to the 5th fret, 3rd string. And then the 7th fret, 4th string, twice. And that is how I concluded the first half. So now I've got um, in the second video we're going to go through the the, the next half uh, of the solo, which goes into more of the double stop stuff. So I'm going to show you how to bring it down the neck. Be sure when you're practicing this, if you're uh, if you've downloaded the uh, MP3 jam tracks, maybe start with the slower one first, just until you can get get it kind of figured out, and then work your way up to that uh, the faster one. And um, All right, well, let me go ahead and back up. I'll play through everything in part one uh, one more time, and then we'll see you in part two. So here we go.